A uh, very good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to the Reds Report with a, a review of the Watford's match and a preview of the upcoming Tuesday night uh, battle against Cardiff. A uh, special guest this week is a man who's been on our podcast plenty of times, uh, always gets positive reviews, mainly people saying you finally got somebody who knows what he's talking about. Probably the reason why he was co-commentator yesterday with Matt Bailey on the Barnsley I Follow. Mr John Parkin, how are we doing? Good evening. I don't think I, I don't. I won't say I know what I'm on about. I think I might just get lucky more than more than more than anything else. You'll fit right in then. You'll fit right in. <laughs> um, also, back again this week. He's not been feeling well, so he's not been banging in goals for the uh, the cross keys at Worth. And if we were the A team, he'd be face only because he's the youngest. And it's of course Mr. Chris Ridgard. Chris, how are we doing? Hey. Hey up, Carlo. Yeah, I'm all right, thank you. Yeah, not, not so bad. A bit of a cough, but other than that, I'm uh, I'm hanging in there. I'm quite disappointed actually because we, we're having John on the show. It uh, ends my uh, 46 run uh, consecutive run of being the best striker on the on the Reds report. Obviously, John's ended that run for me. So that's still up for debate. Yeah. That's, I've not seen you play yet. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Uh, also joining us again. Um, well, he'd have to be Hannibal in our A team, and that's only because he is the oldest. Uh, Mr. Steve oh, Andrews. <laughs> uh, good. Uh, yeah, again, ageist jokes. You're very <laughs> ageist these days, you might, since you're getting near to my age. Uh, I'll just leave. Oh, well, I'm never going to catch you up, am I? Let's face it. <laughs> and by the way, you talk about striker. Me and Steve on Monday night walking football. Tell you, Steve, I tell you, he's not bad. I mean, I can't go over the halfway line because I'm knackered, but Steve does all right. <laughs> right, Chris, take it away. Yeah, um, absolute massive result. I don't think. Anybody saw that coming, Ray? I know Steve picked Hold on, one... hold on. What hold did on, I tell Steve? you? What did I tell you? You picked a 1 0, Steve. You there didn't you tell go. Which way. No. Um, so, yeah, Cal outside comes out. Uh, no, Colly Woodrow. Were you worried? More worried? Um, listen, if, if Woodrow's not playing, I'm always worried because I think he's just one of a kind. I think he's probably, for now, the only striker we have that has established that he is a championship striker. Um, I think Schmidt is a completely different strike. He does a lot of work off the ball, but still, I think, goes missing at times. And, you know, the jury is still out on Connor Chaplin, and I know he runs a lot, and I know he's really energetic. But for me, a striker needs to be ready to put the ball, to put ball in the net and, and not be down the halfway line chasing people down and forcing mistakes. Maybe that's the style of play. I don't know. But, yeah, it did worry me. But, obviously, you know, never, never forget Captain Mowat because he'll nip one in whenever we want. Steve, thoughts on uh, on that result, absolute, and the performance as well that came with it to a certain yeah. degree. It's, oh, it's divided it. Twitter. So I, I know we got the result, but in terms of the performance, some were feeling that we played amazing off the ball, and I think others saying that we'll put on the ball. I, I don't care. We won, didn't we, Steve? We did win. Uh, it were, I, it, I thought it was a really good performance in parts. Um, the only bit of criticism I would have thought. Um, I don't know whether I'm really happy with Styles playing that left wing back, that left wing back role because he were he were pushing forward and let's face it, he's one of the most talented midfielders we've we've had for a long time, uh, and I like to see him marauding forwards. Uh, but a couple of times he did get caught on that left hand side and right hand side as well, and that did that did worry me a little bit. Yeah, yeah, uh, John, yourself, you attended, you were on uh, on commentary. Great job, by the way. A lot of people. Yeah. Saying nice things about you on Twitter, uh, which is good, isn't it, for a change? You're not no, used I've to been, that. I've been You're not used to football fans <laughs> saying nice things to you, are you, John? I think they were the ones. I'm really surprised that he, uh, he, he, were, he were quite good at it. I was really surprised. I'm like, I, I did it for 21 years. You know what I mean, I've half an idea what I'm doing. Uh, <laughs> but no, to be fair, yeah, I think uh, on, on whether it were a good performance, uh, I think they just did what they had to do. Uh, Defensively, they were solid, as as, uh, as Steve just said a couple of times. They got in down the their right hand side, uh, just from just from people switching off. Really, I mean, there were a free kick second, uh, first half, and the kids nearly got in. Uh, and it, it's a it's a it's a free kick, and he's just spotted it, and he's made a run. And I think it were Styles actually who didn't follow him. Mm. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Look, yeah. Luckily, the kids. Quick. Luckily, the kids. Uh, the kids had a, a terrible touch, but. Uh, it's just little things like that when you when you move up the levels it's some little things and they got away with it yesterday uh, luckily uh, but when you're playing against uh, quality opposition week in week out they'll get a point where them 
them mistakes do cost you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we've got a visitor, John, it looks like. Uh, is he all wave? I'll look over the shoulder. Oh, hell. <laughs> oh, bless him. How are we doing? <laughs> 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 Yeah. So Carlo, John's mentioned Barnsley's defence there. Yeah. There were a few chances. John's mentioned that quick free kick from Tom Cleverley, which nearly found Ishmael Saar. Ishmael Saar found Tom Cleverley at back post. Cleverley fired over. So there were a few, a few twitchy bum moments, so to speak, Carlo. But defensively, we look a lot better than what we did a year ago. Steve, you could say we've made progress, Carlo. Have we made progress from a year ago? Just, just tell Steve we've made progress from a year ago, Carl. No, tell think, me. I think things are getting better. Listen, we've had two we've had two games, clean sheet, six points. So you know, I think we want more, don't we? You know, there is always that bit of danger when Anderson's on the ball that you know, if, if the ball's coming over, somebody's leaving a gap behind him. Um, I think Halleck um, has, has settled into the team probably better than what Anderson has done. Um, aerial wise. No, not so much of a problem, but I think ball at feet coming at Anderson, there's still that twitchy bum at times. But listen, you can only solve one, one problem at a time. We've got Mowat in a role where he can now contribute with goals. Maybe now he'll start looking. Cause he, he used to be central defender, didn't he? New gaffer. So I'm pretty sure yeah. he'll, he'll yeah. have some you know, extra time. I think, with, I, uh, think John, with I think John made a comment. Uh, John made a comment when we were doing commentary. Um, I don't know if John can remember this. Uh, they were breaking, I think it was down our left again. And John yeah. said, bring him down, take a yellow card. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you think that's, it's not dirty play, but do you think we need to get a little bit more savvy into doing things like that, that sort of thing? Like I say, it's not, yeah, it is intentional, but, you know, there's times where we have to play like that. I, yeah. I, I think so, Steve. Yeah. I, I, the game that springs to mind last year, well, the Huddersfield at home game, I've never seen us been as physical as we were, and we absolutely played them off part. Go on, John. Uh, it's, it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a football terminology. Yeah, it's a good yellow card. Yeah, yeah. If, you, <laughs> if you've got someone breaking, it's a good yellow card, and you can say it's right or wrong. Everyone does it. Uh, on that point as well, a couple of times, uh, the, the centre half blocked blocked the strikers' runs off, which yeah. again is not uh, not particularly within the rules of the game, but. It's, it's effective and, and it's little stuff like that where obviously the more experience you get, uh, the, the, more, the more you'll learn that sort of stuff. But it's a little thing. If you're, if you're making a run as a striker in behind, I never did it much. I think I did it three times in <laughs> 680 games or something. But if you're making a run and, and off the ball, the centre half just puts his, uh, puts his arm across and smashes you across the face. There's not really a lot you can do. And more, more, probably... Nine times out of ten, if not more, you, you're gonna uh, you're gonna get away with that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Steve, Carlos talked about defence. Uh, John obviously brought up a few things there about about the centre back. Looking at midfield, then you mentioned Callum Styles been sacrificed as a left wing back. Surely he can't get in ahead of Mo and Matty James on that display anyway. So. Ah, I see. I've got to disagree with you there. Got to okay, disagree okay. with you. Um, Moit, no, I think Moit this last few games has really come back to him, to his old self. Uh, he's playing in that attacking role, um, which he, which he likes, which he loves, and which is is missed definitely. Um, Matty James, yeah, he's a class player. I don't think he's match fit as yet. My only worry with Matty James is um, he's only here while January. Yeah, he'll be good for bringing kids through and and giving them some experience and what have you. But I don't want such as your Amal Palmers and your Callum Styles and your Simos um, to feel as though they're being pushed out. I'd rather see us as young players, while they're playing well, still given that chance. Yeah, that's an interesting one. It's the conundrum, isn't it, about, about getting yeah. points on the board and playing a player that doesn't belong to you that's not really going to get any better for yourselves. And there's no value in it that, other than that minute in time and winning games. I'm all for winning games, Steve, but me and you, will, uh, we always have a debate, don't we, every show? So. It's good experience. <laughs> Matty James is going, to br he's going to bring good experience yeah. and, and he'll, he'll, he'll do nothing but bring kids on. But I don't want, such as Ramal Palmer, who is a very similar sort of player, breaking up, breaking up play and then can play a ball out. I don't yeah. want him to feel as though he's been overlooked when he's had two or three really good games. Well, they might get a chance in, uh, in January, depending on, on what happens with and, and, and don't, James. Uh, don't forget, John, Chris. Sorry, Herbie, oh, sorry. Kane, Herbie, no, no, Kane is there, Herbie Kane is there as well. 
I mean, one yeah. point something million, both from Liverpool. We've seen him before. He's, he's being, well, he's being kept on the bench at the moment because of how other people are playing. You know? Having seen how we play when he comes off bench, but... I'm not surprised you're on bench. That, what were we doing <laughs> with that corner? He started off their best attack from one of our corners. <laughs> he doesn't look like, he's not as good as Matty James and Alex Smart by him. Not. Anyway, by the by, let's not be too negative. We've won. John, you were a centre half <laughs> once upon a time. Um, Carlos mentioned Michael Hellick fitting in really well at the right centre half position. Mads Anderson were mentioned by yourself numerous times on Saturday. He's a right footer playing centre half at the left hand side of the centre back three. Does that have an effect? Because he sometimes looks unbalanced. He sometimes looks. Carl, would you agree with that? Do you think? Um, I think it's just the way the gaffer wants to play. I think they're still getting used to it. Yeah. You know. Do you think it has an effect, John? It shouldn't. No. I mean, it's, uh, it should be. If you're playing in the championship, you should be able to use your left foot half decent. You know what I mean? It's not. It's not. It's not really just there for standing on. But uh, I mean, as a defender, what what's his role? He's just got to defend. Right? If he if he shanks it, I play with his left foot. It doesn't matter. No. He's not. He's not in the team to create chances and all that. He's in there to stop the ball winning the net. So the, the fact of playing on the a, a, a playing on the left shouldn't, for me, really have a have a uh, have a bearing on it. Really. No, and we defended well. You know, a, a clean sheet against a team that were in, in Premiership last season, Carl. You know that. It, Seems to be coming together, organised at the back. Yeah, I think um, somebody said it yesterday, and, and I had to sort of agree because they, they mentioned, you know, over a hundred million. Um, that team that was uh, on the pitch yesterday for them, um, it might have been hundred million, but they were relegated, you know. And, and if, if I go out and buy a second-hand, I don't know, Ford Escort, and somebody charges me thirty grand for it, doesn't mean it's worth it. It's just what I happen to pay for it because yesterday. It's that old saying, can you do it on a Saturday rainy afternoon at Oakwell? And, and lots of those players yesterday looked below championship level to me. Maybe just a bad day. Maybe we forced them into those mistakes. But um, I think the game plan from a Barnsley tactical point of view worked. We pressed them. We forced them into mistakes. And then we, ca- well, we, capitalized, we capitalized once, but that's all that matters, isn't yeah, it? <laughs> yeah. One more than them. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Steve Carroll's mentioned tactics and game points stuff there. The word that keeps getting banned around is the vertical game. Uh, I know John mentioned <laughs> it, I think that's just getting the ball forward as quick as possible. It's all these, we didn't it's all win. these new coaching things, isn't it? it must be, that must be a new fancy coaching where vertical. It's just kicking the ball as long as you can, isn't it? That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We didn't win many headers, and I didn't expect us to win many headers with, with, with Chaplin and Schmidt and, and Freezer up top. But we did pick up a lot of second balls, Steve, in, in the middle of the park. We were onto them quite quickly. And that obviously did result in a goal, but it also resulted in, in most of our t- attacks came from that. Yeah, we did. Uh, I think the stats said that we closed them down 200 and odd times and, you know, to get the ball and to get that second ball. Um, I felt a bit sorry for Schmidt yesterday. I didn't think he got very much service. Um, he tried to get him to... I, I just don't think his game is the running away headless chicken sort of game. He needs to be in and around box. Yeah. You've got Freezer and Chaplin to do that. And I just I just didn't see him getting very much service yesterday, getting very many chances. And when Miller came on, again, young lad, he's hardly played for us. He's been out on loan. And he got one decent chance and put it wide. But again, there wasn't much service to that front sort of central striker I didn't feel yeah yeah it's funny you mentioned you mentioned strikers John you, you mentioned uh, Patrick Schmidt you also mentioned Miller when he came on living off scraps which uh, I texted you because I found that quite funny John because uh, the last time I saw you were in West Melton fish bar and uh, you did actually get scraps <laughs> I like uh, scraps I like I, I scraps nice... and chips and sauces <laughs> <laughs> I had a nice chuckle to myself that's all uh, John he mentioned Schmidt not probably not being physical enough to play up front on him on his own. You know, Steve mentioned him being a bit of a reporter, being in and around the box. Horses for courses, isn't it, with strikers? And the manager clearly ain't got a, a choice at the minute. The market's shut. He can't pick what he wants. He's, he's got what he's got. Is it a case of putting round pegs in, in square holes until January with strikers as such? There's different yeah. types of strikers, John, isn't there? Yeah, maybe it is. But I think, I think to be fair, he sort of half sacrificed himself for the team. Uh, up there on his own, most of the most of the game. I know it was supposed to be a four, four, a three, four, three, but it really were a, a four, five, one, really, uh, especially out of possession. Uh, so I, I think he put himself about. He's not expected to win headers, but the thing what he did do is he uh, he stopped the centre half getting clean headers. 
where you, where you can put distance on it. Um, the same as I said, I, I said it in commentary yesterday. That if, if you know that if you know this vertical ball or whatever bollocks it is, right? <laughs> is that that's a technical the, uh, term? That's, 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 the the that's, that's the children can watch tick disappear, <laughs> Carl. <laughs> Sorry, I, mean, I, try, I try my best as well. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I mean, the, the thing with that, if, if you know that that's how you're going to play as a team, yeah. Mauer and James, uh, they, can, they, they don't have to look for the ball for centre halves. Uh, if they know that's how they're going to play, they can play it up and then they can be on the front foot. Ah. It's, when, it's when you get caught in between trying to play out from the back and one of your midfields is coming in to looking for the ball and then the ball goes over their heads and there's just too much distance between them and the, and the strikers. When you, when you know as a team that's what you're going to do, Mowat and James can be already on the front foot uh, and trying to pick up the second ball. And same as, uh, same as I said, if Schmidt doesn't, he doesn't mind it. win the header and, and James are, are in play and picking up the, the second ball which is the, the main way that Barnsley were going to score yesterday I feel yeah, yeah that's interesting you, you kind of don't think about that as a football fan sometimes I think you lose sight to the fact that how big the pitch actually is and how much area you're trying to cover uh, Carlo impress, impressive result uh, flying up the table now um, two big wins from the start it's, it's, it's a dream start isn't it for, for a manager um, yeah um, it, it, listen, it is take nothing away from him. Um, I think if if you point to points, no matter how you get them. But I think the first three points against QPI, you know, the red cards, the penalty, that sort of switched the balance in that match a bit. But we, you, listen, we took advantage of that. And yesterday, you know, we had um, Alex Morwood with a moment of brilliance uh, and a bit of space around him, and we didn't give that to them. So therefore, you deserve it. Um, you look ahead of the next two. You've got Cardiff and Derby. Uh, I think if you go to Cardiff, you know, to me, if you can go there on a, a Tuesday evening when it's raining and it's wet and it's horrible and you can go, come away with your point, I think, you know, you've done well. I'm pretty sure he'll want to go for the win and, you know, who knows what's possible. Um, and, uh, you know, listen, John knows more about what it's like playing on a Tuesday night in Cardiff than what we do. Um, but he couldn't have asked for a better start. And I, I, I like that idea. Whereas the previous man I talked about, focus in the game and focus, focus, and all, always talking about the focus. This one says, sacrifice everything and be there for your teammates. And I can't help but think that those lads probably get that a lot better than focus, if you know what I mean. But listen, um, six, 15th in the table, you know, in the form table, we're in the top 10. And I think we're now playing to something that what everybody expected us to play like, following our uh, run of results after the uh, initial, well, after lockdown number one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, last question, then we'll move on to preview uh, a card. If Steve, Adam Murray did a great job, didn't he? Steady in the ship, ready, <laughs> ready, <laughs> ready for this manager to pick up and, and, and take us forward. That's my opinion, Steve. <laughs> no, yeah, he did. He did do a good job to hold it together. And I'm not, when we, when we had the conversation previously, um, you, you, you want to see a new manager, you want to see fresh ideas. You want to see fresh things on pitch. Um, like I said, I didn't know whether Adam Murray were part of the solution or part of the problem. Um, he's obviously good at what he does and he's good working behind the scenes. But I'm glad to see that Valerian's now brought in his own sort of right-hand man. Um, and I, I just hope they can all work together and continue the sort of football that, you know, that we really want to see. Um, obviously, yeah. attacking, getting some goals. Uh, but bringing them kids through as well, which is what Adam Murray's, you know, is, is good at, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right, Steve. Uh, most importantly, winning, Steve. We need yeah. to see winning. Um, <laughs> managers, John, uh, we're going to move on to Cardiff in a minute. We've had a caretaker manager. We've got a new manager coming in. Surely it's awesome, of course, that some players will play better under certain characters and certain types of manager. This manager seems to have a bit of an aura about him. He's obviously played at a very high level for Bayern Munich and, and Crystal Palace in Premier League. So he's got, he's got that respect there. I, I just wondered what your thoughts were on what, what kind of manager suited yourself and, and, and how the lads will have adapted. to. They've had three different managers uh, in quick succession this season. Uh, just thoughts on managers, John, and things like that without, without dropping anybody in it. <laughs> my favourite managers were the ones that didn't turn up till Thursday. They're my <laughs> favourite managers. Uh, now, it's like, I think there's a little bit uh, too much read into it. You know what I mean? You're professional footballers uh, at the end of the day. It's your job to play football. 
<clears throat> new managers come and go. That's part and parcel of it. You, you see, I mean, I, I think I had something like 32 managers in my career, which is an outrageous, outrageous number. And so I think only, I think I were only responsible for getting 15 of them sacked personally. So <laughs> they, weren't, they weren't all my fault. Uh, I, I got one, Sean O'Driscoll. I, I signed for him at Donny on the Wednesday. He got sacked Thursday night and never even played a game for him. Oh. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> but uh, no, it, it, it's your job. You're a professional. You, the manager will come in. He'll tell you tell you what he wants from you, and then it's up to you to to do what he's asking. It's, it's sometimes a good. It's if you're not if you're not in and around the team uh, with, with one manager, uh, and a new manager comes in, sometimes gives everybody a lift, even the lads who have not been involved. Because it's a bit like a fresh start, especially yeah. especially the fact that obviously the last the last three managers have been have been foreign, so they probably don't really know the players at all. Whereas if you get if you got obviously the managerial managerial manager, you go around with you, you got you, you, your managers getting one job then getting another job they've played against you you've played against their team so they they've already have got an idea about you mm. whereas when uh, when it's somebody coming from from abroad it really is a, a clean a clean sheet and uh, and it, it's one of them it's it, you've just got to get on with it it's, he'll tell you what he wants uh, and if you don't do it I presume you'll not be in his team yeah yeah. Fair enough. Uh, Carlo, we'll move on to Cardiff now, shall we? Um, yeah. Are Watford the kind of team we like to play against? Because they try and play a bit of football, we can press them outfield. And are Cardiff the kind of team that we don't want to play against and we're not very good at it when it becomes a little bit more physical? Um, listen, there's no doubt about it. Any team that Neil Harris managed has always been physical. I mean, look at, look at his Millwall time or times Millwall there. I think though I don't know, they didn't get near us at when we did this. Well no, they didn't. No, not at all, man. Not at all. Um I think because obviously um I hope it don't happen, but obviously Keith Moore is playing. And I think well ever you've got a six foot seven, six foot eight striker, you know, that's gonna be the sort of balls that's coming to him. So you need to be ready for that, don't you? So I think it'll be a different type of type of game. Um I don't know, because I think confidence, and again, listen, I play walking football, I've been on the losing side two weeks running, and I'm always on bibs, so John will tell you better. I think confidence gives you that extra 5% going into the next match again. You know, when you've had two clean sheets and two, let's face it, decent opponents, you're now going to Cardiff. I, I suppose your fear is a bit less, and, and, and you're able to play with a bit more freedom. Um, there's no doubt that somebody like a Helic can, can, can mark key for more, um, but they have got quality all over the pitch, and that's why I think if you, if you can go there and not lose, I think that's that's all we're asking of them, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Steve, who we're looking for for a big performance uh, against Cardiff, and how many goals will Conor Chaplin score? <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me think about that one. Hold on a minute. Um, I think a man of the moment is Moe, isn't it? Let's be honest. Um, he's found his feet again. He's found his shooting boots. So, however he's fit in his own field, uh, we're in with a shout. Um, Kiefer Moore, I think, will prove to be a really good test. Um, not only for Alec, but for Anderson as well, like John said in commentary uh, on Saturday. Anderson always seems to look to have a bit of a mistake in him at times, whether that's just his youth. Uh, you know, I'm sure Alec and, and Solbauer will bring him on. But no, I've got a good feeling, while ever we can carry this momentum uh, and this newly found sort of fighting spirit, um, no, I think we can go to Cardiff and, and get a bit of something. I hope so. John, you've been to Cardiff and got a bit of something before, I'm sure. Um... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Is, there anything... <laughs> Is there anything for Barnley to fear, John? Young, um, exciting team of the back of two wins, not lost in five, but... I don't think there's anything. I, I, I don't think there's anything, anything to fear winning to any game. Personally, I don't know if that's just my. What, what the worst that can happen is you get beat. Right, fair enough. You move on to the next game. Mm. It's not. There's nothing to fear about going out and playing football uh, and, and fear of getting beat. But I mean, it's going to be a totally different test. Same as uh, Watford were, were try to play. Uh, Cardiff, Cardiff don't really try to play. Uh, be a big test for. Playing against Keith, of course, I, I think he's very, very effective. Uh, if, if he gets chances, he's a good finisher as well. So it'll be a, it'll be a tough test. But I mean, Cardiff are not in great form themselves. Uh, so it's one of them. I mean, it's one. 
I can imagine they're probably glad that the, the fans are not in at the minute because they'll be getting they'll be getting pelters. Um, <laughs> but it, it's going to be a tough game. But any game's tough in this league. It's 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 how you <clears throat> just got to go there, roll your sleeves up, and uh, and not forget a result. Yeah, John, you mentioned getting pelters there. What's the what's the biggest insult you've ever been given? Oh dear. I think I've got all the black book with them all in. It's about like the Quran. Uh, <laughs> I think I, I remember playing away for York at Cambridge. I think, and I, I, I must have had eight really good chances. Like back in when I when we first started when I was nineteen, and they're, they're actually singing "Parking for England" sarcastically, and that was <laughs> like that was that, that, that worse than the you fat so and so and all that sort of stuff. But I used to love it. I used, I used to love getting abused. I used to, and then. You score and then and then you can you can shove it up in there. Yeah. <laughs> Carlos scoreline against Cardiff. Um, well, I mean, I agree. I looked this afternoon uh, in the last six. Cardiff won one, lost one, and drew four. Uh, obviously, they, they lost against QPR yesterday. Um, you know what? I'll 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 go for the surprise and and I'll say we'll make a one 0 win. Brilliant, Steve. I'd like a scoreline knowing who's scoring <laughs> what, please. <laughs> Um, do you know what? I've, I've got to agree with Carlo. I think whoever gets that first goal, um, neither team are sort of top of the form at the minute, like John said. Um, but, you know, we're getting there. We're getting better. So I think whoever gets that first goal, which I think will be us, will we'll carry on for a 1-0. So, yeah, I'm going to go 1-0 uh, to us this time. To us. To us. <laughs> uh, and John, yourself, is it 1-0 across the board? I'm going to go 1-0. One all, and that'd be a good point for Barnsley, I think, John. I think, I think definitely, especially backing up two home wins. You know, what I mean, if you if you sort if you put your games into into little blocks, from from sort of Tuesday to Tuesday, you've got nine points. If you can take seven, yeah, you'd yeah. be over the moon with that. You know, what I mean? if you can if you can get enough of them sort of three three game blocks where you're getting six seven points, you'll be up the table and not looking over your shoulders again. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, one last question for everybody. Uh, it seems we've got our own international Dutch man of mystery, Carlo van der Watering, and uh, we've lost an absolute legend uh, in the UK film industry. I just wondered, Steve, who your favourite Bond was? Oh, now then, that's unfair. Um, <laughs> just, you know what, Sean Connery, fantastic, what a fantastic actor. My favourite Bond were Roger Moore. Got to be honest, Roger Moore for me. John? Quite, I like Daniel Craig, you know. I do, I like Daniel. I thought you were going to ask us which were the his favourite Bond girls. Not that oh, right. Bond yeah, Bond that much time. time. <laughs> That's a different podcast as it is. I tell you what I'd like to see, John, for the under the cosh, is you recreating that, that Daniel Craig scene when he comes out, out of the sea. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Well, yeah. We could film it at Westbury Res. Are you walking up, Jack? <laughs> <laughs> Remember when you go to Blackpool to do an episode, John? You could do that for us. It'll not be a, not be a pretty sight, let me tell you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to do another half a store on this lockdown. It's only a month. <laughs> uh, lads, that, uh, that's pretty much it. Carlo, have you got a favourite Bond villain? Is there a Dutch one? Uh, uh, ooh, um, yeah. I don't know what his name was, though. Jeroen Krabbe played a Russian, whatever he was. How about Blofeld? That, he sounds like a Dutch bloke. No, no. Uh, oh, uh, it's Van Rental, that's who we want. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen. When I first came to Barnsley and I saw these, it said Dart and Van... I thought it said Dart and Van Hei. I thought, oh, there's more Dutch people living here than just me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for listening and watching. You can find us on YouTube, on iTunes, on Apple Podcasts. We're on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, anything Grindr, else, Steve? Just you up there. <laughs> <laughs> no, brilliant lads thank you Steve nice to see you buddy you had a nice thank you man you're good no worries John thank you very much for making time in our very busy busy schedule of yours no problem um, at all. under the cosh is going well isn't it yeah flying obviously this lockdown we'll have to start zooming again bit looks, but uh, yeah it's going it's going well got me through the, the first lockdown that did because yeah, it's yeah, the only the real watch. chance you get to have a laugh so yeah definitely yeah oh what about on here Cam Oh, yeah, like I said, under the cosh got me through, you know. Um, and John.
And what about the... We're what? supposed to do the Kilimanjaro next year, which it looks like it's going to be getting... We're going to delay it for a year, I think. Uh, okay. And then we're going, to, we're going to do Adrian's Wall next year instead. Uh, and, uh, and then hopefully do Kilimanjaro the year after. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that's something that's massively important. I mean, especially this number of lockdown coming, people struggling. Uh, read a statistic today that 37 suicides just in London per day at the minute. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Just in London. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a frightening, frightening number. Um, so, yeah, that's what we're trying to, trying to get, uh, get people out there walking, walking and, and talking to people, really. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Brilliant, John. Keep up your good work and send us up to Big Norm as well. Uh, we'll do. Carlo, that's it. Another episode. You got something nice to say to everybody before we go? I'm still thinking of my favourite Bond girl. Thank you for watching, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>